This Benji is printed from original file and this comes from 3D scanned file. Can you tell the difference? Welcome to my tech farm. 3D scanner for this video. This is Miraco and this box is sent to me by the Revo Point in exchange for the review. There is no additional payment from their side, but this video and the whole channel is sponsored by Polymaker and by my Patreon supporters. About the scanner, this is all in one product uh, which is equipped with the flip screen. This means we can do those uh, 3D scannings independent from the laptop and we don't have to be connected with the wires. This means we can scan and process the models on the device and no need to be connected with the computer. And for this it has 5000 mAh battery, which is enough for approximately 2 hours of scanning. The speed is approximately 15 frames per second and the accuracy will depend on the modes, but it can go down to 0.05 mm. Additionally, we can switch mid-scan between capturing fine details or large areas. This is quite useful if we have some big object with some small details on it and we can scan them in quite good quality, but we can still scan the whole object too. And the scanning distance is between 100 mm and 1 meter, so very universal product we have here. It is equipped with 8 core 2.4 GHz processor, 256 GB hard drive and the memory is 16 or 32 GB. So this is the key difference between Miraco and Miraco Pro. But let's see what's in the box. The content of the package was very rich. Bag, tripod, turntable, this is the main unit. Then we have a sample model for the scanning. <laughs> this is something like a Benchy on the 3D printers. And then we have calibration board, the markers, the power adapter, it has uh, many outputs. I'm not sure which voltage the scanner needs for the charging, but it is able to charge it very fast. User manual on five languages. Let's take a closer look of the main unit. Here we have the power button. This is some kind of play button. Probably we can start or pause the scanning with this. USB type C plugged properly for the charging and for the data transfer. And on the bottom we have the screw for the tripod. This is a screen and it is a flip screen. If I want to scan myself, for example, I'm not sure how easy is that, but I will try that too. It has a great grip and I can feel very comfortable holding it only with one hand too. The turntable is very simple and maybe a little bit small. So here we have the switch, clockwise, contraclockwise, USB Type-C for the power and here we can set the rotation speed. This is the power cable for the turntable and it's a little bit confusing because it is USB Type-C, the input, but the other side is regular USB. This means I cannot use this power adapter but use some other source of the power. This is the cable for the 3D scanner, USB Type-C on both sides, which is fine because the power adapter has this USB Type-C output. And in case your computer has the regular USB only, you can use this adapter. Not sure is it charged, let's try to turn it on. I skip connection to the network because uh, transferring the data over the cable is much faster and this is portable so I don't want to be locked to my local network only. I choose my time zone. I have to accept this privacy agreement. Next. Oh, it's almost ready for the scanning. It starts with a quick tutorial. What is far or near mode, single shot mode, working on the project, post processing. There are some object types which these 3D scanners don't really like. Those are black, transparent or shiny objects. And in that case I'm prepared I will use the scanning spray, but baby powder or dry shampoo can be used too. I cannot record the screen during the scanning, so I cannot show you the tracking. Actually there is a hidden pull down menu with the screen recording button. And I noticed this much later, <laughs> maybe I should read the user manual sometimes. <laughs> But what is more important, I will show you the objects which is scanned and I will show you the final result. Let's start with the scanning. Only in this first scanning I will show you the longer procedure. The duck has a black eye, so I will use the scanning spray on it. And when it dries, it's more like grayish and this is enough. 
Just in case if the object is too simple then you can place few things around it and it will keep easier that tracking. I'm in a near mode now. Of course with the turntable this would be much easier. So this is just a point cloud. Let's move to the fusion. Apply. This will take some time, I will jump in the video. For this it needed approximately 2 minutes. Before I continue, first I want to remove unnecessary points. Lasso. Now my finger covers the exact point, but here in the corner I can follow exactly the location of the cursor. Invert and delete. Immediately I reduce number of the points. Now let's remove the ground. Isolation, overlap detection, mm, minimally. Bottom of the head is not scanned. I will show it later. We can do several separate scans and merge them later, but only in the PC version, not in the scanner. Let's move to the mesh. Default settings apply. Again, I can check a few things. Isolation. Actually, I want to fill holes. Uh -huh, okay. Simplifying the object. Okay, a little bit. This was fast and I still want to fix the holes. This is important for CD printing because okay, it will be connected. Yes, he detected these points and I have to select them. Actually, I want to select all. And now this object is ready for the export to computer and for CD printing. This time I try to use a tripod and turntable. This is its maximum speed, so it is not really too fast. And I will scan this object, which is not in black color. It should be visible for the scanner. In this case, I should use the scanning spray on the black surfaces. I'm in a near mode, the distance is excellent, and all surfaces are visible. Ah, maybe I could turn off. Yes, base removal on, record. After one rotation. Hmm, really nice. Now actually from this angle the bottom of the head is not really visible and I shouldn't stop the printing just pose. Let's see if I can resume the scan. Mm -hmm. After I assume I could move the scanner lower to scan the bottom of the face, but there is better method for this, I will show it later. And now this cat, it is 3D printed and it is still scannable in the near mode. Wow, look how clean is this scan in the first attempt in one pass, just only bottom of the head is not scanned correctly. Let's try to do two passes, I'm very curious. I could just resume the scan and it find the tracking and I just move the scan a little bit lower and now I have the bottom of the face too. <laughs> wow, better than original, only I have to fill the holes. After filling the holes, it is ready for the exporting, but if I don't mind processing on the computer, better method is to do several scans and merge them in the desktop application. But I will present this later. Hmm. I think everybody is familiar with the Benchy. Of course I don't expect to see everything inside the cabin, but let's see what can we get with this. In the first attempt, I am scanning in handhold mode, moving the scanner up and down. These are raw pixels and it's much better than I expected. Actually this I want to print to see how it looks like in real life. <laughs> Copy paste Benchy. This was scanned in one rotation in handhold mode, moving the scanner up and down. And uh, I used two big smoothing so the resolution is too low. But let's repeat this with several passes. I'm still curious what can I do with the benches, so I'm scanning it in the three passes. This is the second one and the last one. In desktop version I imported the point clouds and first I have to fuse them. Only then I can use the merge function. 
automatic method work fine and the points are joined into one object. There is a nice tutorial on Rayo Points YouTube channel, I placed a link to it in the description. There are some holes left on the objects, but when I fill those holes, the software closed some windows too, for example this one on the back side, or two smaller on the front. The inner elements of the cabin are inaccurate too, since the scanner cannot see clearly inside. But from this point I just exported the file and moved to the Bamboo Studio. The simplest solution was just to recreate those holes in the slicer. I cut the bottom to have a flat surface and then I printed this scan benchy. The similarity is huge. From outside it is hard to tell which one is the original. Only in this chimney hole I can see that this one is 3D scanned. The biggest difference is inside the cabin, but it is hard to present it with the camera because it is not visible from the outside. For exactly the same reason, the 3D scanner couldn't see those hidden inner surfaces. To be honest, I'm surprised too. I didn't expect it so good results. Few more side-by-side -side footages. And a reminder, the one on the left side is from 3D scanned file. So just one more time, this is how it looks like in a slicer. Now switching from near to far mode. This is done in 7 seconds. Now let's check that flip screen and if I can scan myself. This is the recorded screen, speed up 4 times. I had several attempts, but as predicted, I can scan only my front side and I can never be perfectly still during this process. Mostly my arm moves a lot. In next attempt, I ask my wife to be my model. What you see is recorded first attempt, speed it up 8 times. Continuous tracking, huge improvement compared to the old versions. This is the point cloud, looks promising. Fusing the points. This looks good too, but there are some holes which I can fill in the mesh mode. I don't really like the top of the head, some hair is missing there. In the point cloud it's there. Fuse is still almost ok, but in the mesh it's uh, not nice. So I fixed this part in a mesh mixer, playing with it approximately 2 or 3 minutes. And this is the preview in the slicer, ready for the printing. <laughs> the next model has much more patience than my wife. My hand for the size reference. And again 8 times speeded up footage. I moved the scanner up and down until I was going around it. Not even comparable to wired scanners where I have to watch the cables, watch the screen on the laptop and still pointing the unit to the object, keeping the correct distance. And the result, raw points, fused and the mesh. And this was also absolutely the first attempt. And look at those details on the face. In the settings I am enabling the colors. This means it will also record the pictures with RGB camera. And this small garden knob will be my next text object. And it is too big for the near mode, so I'm switching to the far scanning method. Change in the few seconds and this time it is completely visible. Again some speed up footage recorded by the scanner. Since on the back side you don't have enough tracking details, just in case I added few objects around it. The result is great. I'm removing some unnecessary points. And again these are rough points, fused with removed base, meshed, but with the color scanning the last step is important too, textured. And now I can export the file to the OBG format, don't use STL because you don't have information about the textures. And what can we do with this file? For example animation in the blender, or upload to the JSC 3DP and use their color resin 3D printing services. I prepared few objects in different colors, just to understand better the possibilities and to see which color is visible to the scanner. All prepared colors are visible, except these two at the end, black and dark brown. I even switched to the dark mode, but as you can see in this triangle, only the yellow is visible. This would be scannable if I would use some whitening method. Shortly, scanning with the freedom. It is so much easier to do the work when I'm not connected with the wires 
and the screen is in front of me. I don't have to check my laptop every two or three seconds to see if I'm still on correct distance and everything is okay with the scanning. And even the tracking is significantly improved compared to the older RevoPoint scanners. Of course, we have to know the possibilities. It still don't like uh, black, transparent or shiny surfaces. So in this case, it is better if we are prepared with some scanning spray or our dimension baby powder or dry shampoo can do the work too. This is my experience with the RevoPoint Miracle CD scanner. And if you have some other, you know, few lines down in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video and um, happy scanning and printing.